I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Tom Calandra of the Calandra Report. Thank you so much for being here. As always, Charlotte, thank you. Nice to see you. And I was going to start by talking a little bit about sentiment, because the last time we saw each other was back in New Orleans, and you were joking that you were wearing black because you're in mourning for people's portfolios. And I noticed we're both unfortunately in black again today, but what is sentiment looking like for you? Well, I mean, obviously it's looking, uh, uh, what a reversal it's yeah. been. Not just for, you know, gold and silver, but the so-called transition metals, uh, copper. I mean, look, it's been very volatile. Um, I think that uh, I've become a big believer, and I have been a big believer in, in the past, but an even bigger believer in platinum, right? As a, a necessary metal for gasoline-powered cars, because we keep hearing so much about transitions. But, you know, you talk about sentiment. New Orleans was, oh, what, four or five months ago? And, you know, it's like, wake up, which side of the bed are you on? You know, these days, you know? It's up, it's down, it's in and around. Meanwhile, uh, capital markets, as, uh, or at least blue chips, uh, when it comes to equities, continue to go higher and higher and higher and set new records. The U.S. dollar continues to go higher and higher. As you know, most most uh, uh, most uh, gold, well, an ounce of gold. Uh, this is a, a coin from the Yukon that I just bought from the Eagle Gold Mine, Victoria Gold, but. An ounce of gold now is at a record high in most in most currencies, including the Canadian currency. I mean, I said, okay, how much do I have to pay for this coin? You know, well, it's like twenty nine hundred dollars Canadian. Like, wait, of course that includes the premium, but that's like twenty one hundred dollars U.S. But uh, the gold price is it's not at a new high in U.S. dollars, but because of the strength of the dollar, which once again, it's kind of a nagging strength every time there's, there's volatility or uh, disbelief in the global recovery, the U.S. dollar goes higher. Uh, so I would say uh, for the companies, and not just gold, silver, platinum, palladium, copper, but for other companies too, as you know, like lithium and uh, tungsten, cobalt, and so on, the so-called transition metals, let's hope they don't become transitory metals. Uh, the sentiment is, is almost the opposite of what it was in New Orleans. So, so that was a good time to buy. It is a good time to buy a few other uh, uh, things now, even though prices you know, are edging higher and higher. Really interesting, and so I'm glad that you brought your your Victoria Gold coin because one, and nuggets, right, Charlie? Nuggets, see? yeah. Let's look at those as nuggets well. Nuggets are from Yukon, and uh, I don't know if you can see them, but uh, don't worry. By the time I get home to Tiburon, California, I'll have lost them, like oh I lose goodness. most of the things, including my head when it's not screwed on, as my uh, my wife says. But beautiful nice. nuggets. Beautiful. I collect nuggets from around the world, and. Uh, and the coin is pretty too, you know, yes. the, the Eagle Gold Mine. I was at that first gold port. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, no, I was really happy to see that you brought them because I know this is a jurisdiction that you follow very closely mm. and we've seen some m and activity up there. I wanted to get your take. So we had Victoria Gold actually make a bid for attack. Yep. That didn't ultimately go through, but now it looks like attack will be acquired by Hecla Mining. That's still in the Supposedly. Works. Supposedly. We'll see how it goes. But I want to get your take on all of that. Well, uh, I'll see John McConnell from Victoria Bowl tomorrow uh, at, a, at, a, at a spectacular lunch that I always uh, arrange with, uh, with two or three people at a great Japanese restaurant. But uh, while I'm here at PDAC, and thank you for not uh, burying us in snow this year. I, although there was a terrible snowstorm. Right on our way in, uh, we, uh, I was lucky, lucky enough, fortunate enough. Chris Hatfield, the famous astronaut, was on a flight a couple of rows ahead of me, and his, his uh, Air Canada, and his brother was piloting the plane. So even though you know we were only like half hour delayed instead of like most flights into Toronto yesterday during the blowing snow, which were like three hours delayed. So maybe it was because of the uh, You're in good hands. of Chris Hatfield, who knows, and his and his brother. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I still think we could see competing bids for ATAC. I've been on that project, uh, the Heck Rackler uh, 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 project, uh, the Rackler Gold area, right, the Centina Gold Belt. And I think uh, uh, John McConnell and his board, Victoria, realized this thing is way too cheap. You know, of course, that, that stock, since 
since it made a, a, a big splash in 2010 or 2011, ATAC, lower and lower and lower. And now it's like, okay, is it a, even a $30 million market cap? Well, at the time it was a $18 million market cap, which is only three weeks or four weeks ago. So I think we'll see another bid for ATAC, but I've been buying Snowline Gold, which is a, yet another company that made a big splash only six months ago, right? And uh, same, same area, Centina Gold Belt, uh, Northern Yukon, and still way undervalued, but not as undervalued as ATAC, right? It's got like 150, 140 million dollar U.S. market cap, and I think we'll see uh, someone eventually buy uh, Snowline Gold, just as we saw Great Bear get bought, and um, you know it's a real thick, long intercepts of of well, one gram plus gold, right? And you know Yukon's a fascinating place. It's a great place. It's it's, one, it's the, the probably newest gold mine. Uh, the Eagle Gold Mine in Victoria in Canada. And, uh, you know, they've had a few hiccups, but, you know, they're moving back toward 200,000 ounces in this their fourth year of production, I think. And uh, a few others that I follow uh, and own a lot of, uh, Banyan Gold, which is a kind of a sister company to Victoria because it's right next door, and it's husband and wife, Tara, Tara Christie, John McConnell, and, um, but that's a pure exploration. And it's been terrific for me over the past five, five, maybe six years. It's gone from like five cents to 40 cents in Canadian. Uh, you know, Yukon is a big place. And, you know, it's a relatively developed place when you compare it to, let's say, far, far northern Quebec, where I own stuff. But still, it's far enough away from everything, but still on the same trends that we see in Alaska, the mineral trends that it makes things attractive and, and uh, the legitimate companies trade at a discount, or whether they're exploration or production. So lots of activity going on in the Yukon as you've outlined for us, but this M&A activity is happening elsewhere in the world as well. So we've seen a bunch of deals so far this year. Some are going through, some may or may not. Is this a big wave of mergers and acquisitions yeah, that we've been waiting for? small ones. Yeah. Right? So far, I mean, there have been yeah. a couple, you know, $500 million plus ones, right? But uh, we are seeing, you know, this is this may be the year of, I'm not going to forecast anything these days, the biggest professional mistake anybody can make. But this is looking like the year of the, you know, the 30 to $50 million or $100 million merger takeover, whether it's stock, stock and cash. You know, okay. Or, or a $100 million company that becomes a $300 million company in a, in a takeover. You know, these are the, the, these are the small, uh, the small companies, the, the legit exploration companies that have been at it forever, have gotten no respect. There are quite a few in Alaska, uh, quite a few still in Quebec, which is a terrific uh, lower Quebec and way more than Quebec. And, uh, and then aside from, you know, gold and silver, you know, I, I think we could see some, uh, very creative transactions for the so-called transition metals, right? Lithium, which is the, the flavor of the month. You know, I'm actually speculating a little there. Bad boy, bad boy. But on a Brazilian company that's, that's you know, making uh, our family some bucks, but selling when I can, right? Because in the end, whatever kind of metal you're talking about, uh, when you see this outpouring of interest, lithium is genuine for now, right? Lithium carbonate prices of 10x over, over five years. Uh, 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 um, Spritamite um, concentrate of 10x, right? Sixty, eighty thousand dollars for uh, for the uh, lithium carbonate concentrates, right? That's uh, you know a ton. That's a lot of money. And God knows we'll need transition metals. But are we going to need all of these transition metals? Who's the latest transition metals company? I mean, even a couple companies that I own and bought for the gold, uh, the copper, uh, and the silver in far northern Quebec, Azimut Exploration and Orford Mining, even they played the lithium card. Now, of course, they have legit uh, lithium concessions, you know, that are, you know, well tracked and proven 
and that got them into the uh, that got them into the limelight. Whereas their stocks have been suffering forever, right? Especially Orphan. But they're, you know, I think we, we need to be a little careful. And uh, I wouldn't, you know, unless you have an inside track on something in Quebec or uh, Brazil when it comes to lithium. Um, when it comes to the explorers, right, or the developers, not, not the producers like Albemarle and these other huge companies that actually have revenue, you better be careful. Uh, you know, uh, you, you might want to think twice. And instead, if you need to be in a transition metal, own copper, whether it's a copper trust and owns the actual copper. Uh, of course, uh, nickel is terrific. Um, Zinc, I love zinc. I, I own, uh, it's hard to buy directly, but I actually own zinc through an Ireland company, Group 11 Resources, tiny, tiny company. So a lot happening, Charlotte. There is so much going on, and I was going to ask you if you could, you've talked a little bit about some of the things that you're doing, but your strategy right now in a little bit more detail, because you mentioned back that previous time we talked, maybe that was more of a time to be buying when everything was very cheap. Now, still some opportunities, but maybe you'd be a little bit more careful. What are what are you doing right now with well, your money? Well, well, first of all, you know, I, I think, um, well, silver is still way cheap, right? I'm not a big silver bug, but, or bug. But I have to admit, silver, the actual metal, is, is pretty cheap. And the silver gold ratio is still so depressed. I mean, depressed, but like gold trades at like tremendous, I don't know what it is, 80 to 1. It should be like 30 to 1. So silver has a lot of upside here if you can find the correct silver explorer. But luckily, we have a lot of uh, gold silver trusts that actually own the bullion and don't have uh, horrendous fees. And I own a couple, uh, and you know, like I, I've always told you, I put money into those like money markets. Whenever I have extra money, I either buy the, the physical, uh, the actual co coins, but also the, you know, the trusts, the, the gold, gold trusts, the silver trusts. My, my uh, the past two years I've been, I've always been a platinum believer, because I believe that we're gonna see, a, you know, re, uh, a rebirth of interest in platinum because platinum is a catalytic converter for gasoline powered cars, right? Platinum's gotten crushed in the past six, eight years because of the Volkswagen diesel scandal, right? It's starting to come back. I buy the Aberdeen, the Aberdeen Platinum Trust. It's platinum, it's not a company uh, that you're betting on, it's actual platinum. But I think if you, if you, if you get it, there are a couple of copper trusts like that, I think. Uh, couple of uh, new ones out there. I'm not going to name any, uh, any of those ones, but I will name the Aberdeen Platinum Trust. It's good. It's, a, it's reliable. The fees are reasonable. And then, you know, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to go out the, out the pipe with risk and speculation, you know, your homework, find out who your, you know, how legit your sources are in terms of the, 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 uh, the CEOs, the geologists, what they do, how new it is that they're doing, like Ivanhoe Mines, of course, uh, copper, zinc, and the DRC, platinum in South Africa. Um, find out what they're doing, but you know, if, be creative. Try to find ways if you know if you want to own cobalt or, or <coughs> as I said, tungsten, nickel. There are ways. Uh, some finding them isn't easy, but if Bill Gates can create companies that, uh, <coughs> excuse me. And explore for cobalt and nickel. You know, I think you'll find information out there. Okay, and <coughs> you know, me. oh no, no worries. So just before we started talking, you mentioned that theme that you had been just going over here right now, which is knowing what source your information oh. is coming from. So that sounds really important. Is there anything else you would add there? Because I think, oh my. you know, at a place like PDAC, this, I, is, this is important. I had a great presentation uh, this morning at the newsletter thing, and um, it was a, uh, um, you know, it was terrific, and it was all about how do we identify sources, who are those sources, not just in, in investing, but in life, correct? And uh, that's important. Uh, how, how do I judge my sources? I, you know, these days when it comes to a credible source, I have, these days when I have a credible source, I, um, I have uh, many uh, different uh, uh, 
let's just say, organizations, institutions that have earned me. Just like, you know, the older, the older you get, you know, the more you've been around the block and when it comes to investing, you know, the more you get burned. So, you know, my credible source list when it comes to people in investing, mostly natural resources, probably down to eight, eight people. It's not very many. Yeah, and, you know, some of the bugaboos, the things to be aware of, right? You know, are your CEOs, CFOs, geologists, newsletter writers, are they using the same old stock phrases? You know, elephant country. What, what are we, hunting for elephants here? Isn't it, Charlotte? Isn't it illegal? To elephant country. You're hunting. You're looking for a medal, not for elephants. Blue sky. You know. You know. Uh, I wonder what Chris Hatfield, the astronaut I just mentioned, thinks about blue sky. Okay, he's been past blue sky, right? What does that mean? It took me years to realize blue sky. Blue sky. What the heck does that mean? They're looking for metal on the ground. They're talking about blue sky. Uh, open at depth. You know, that one is the lowest of the low, literally and figuratively, when it comes to open at depth. Find people. Who, who sidestep the usual cliches, right? Look, I'm guilty of it too. It's, it's hard to be, to create newness every moment, you know? It, and one of the things I said this morning was, you know, I, I, I belong to a book club. Books are important. What books do your sources read, you know? Um, and how to get information from them without asking them questions is informing meaningful relationships. Uh, but my book club, this is year five now, it's every month, and it's a, it's a, a men's book club in California. And, you know, it's terrific. I mean, these are 14 of us, of, of very bright, studious, older guys, right? And, and some of the books I've read because of them have been off the charts. I never would have gotten to those books, like uh, Against Democracy, uh, one, one well known, not a lot of obscure stuff, and I, I know it helped. It helped me realize: look, we're all terrific people, but we all, after a while, you get to know someone. It's like that movie, uh, Banshees of Inisherin, which could win an Oscar uh, this coming week or two. Um, but it's like, you know, boy, you know, for your whole life, boy, are we going to the pub today at two o'clock? You know, boy, I'll see you at six o'clock. Oi, and bringing nothing else that's new, right? So it just so happens that in that book club, there is, you know, there are a few people that bring new stuff, but the one person over all these years that always, rarely repeats himself, right? And he always is trying to create something new. He'll be 101 next year, next week, next week, March, I don't know, 10th, 11th, Phil, at 101. And he always brings something new to the table. And that's not an easy thing to do, whether it's talking to you or listening to some of these cats do their, you know, usual vaporware, blah, blah, blah. So when you find somebody that's new and fresh, right, uh, and wowing you with their ideas, you know, it doesn't have to be Simon Rushdie. It could be, you know, it could be a company who shares your buying. That's important. Just stay away from the tired old phrases that, you know, are so overused, the cliches, you know, the, the vaporware, the overuse of the press release machine. Okay, I think that's a lot of great advice. I think it's a nice place to end. This is definitely things that people should keep in mind, and I almost wish that we published it before PDAC so people could think about it when they're out on the floor. But really great to have you and to see you in person. Charlotte, you and INN. It made a big difference for the Calandra Report, and uh, you have, and uh, you know, it's, it's more than just an investing news network. It's a network about life, and you know, thank you for being staying current. Oh, thank you, Charlotte. Tom. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Tom Calandra with the Calandra Report.